This video covers basic sheet metal terminology and operations used for making parts in lab. The term sheet metal refers to a piece of material possessing a high surface area to thickness ratio. A piece of material is defined as sheet if it has a thickness of one quarter inch or less. If the material is thicker than one quarter inch, the material is termed plate. Sheet metal is a versatile material capable of being formed into a variety of shapes. To demonstrate the usefulness of sheet metal, we will compare fabricating a simple box structure from sheet to the machining processes required to manufacture it from a solid block. Because material cost is always based on total volume, the cost for a piece of sheet metal versus a solid block is much less. Once the material is purchased, we need to look at how much of the material needs to be removed during the fabrication process. To make the part from sheet metal, we need to cut out four corners and punch four holes. Making the part from billet requires machining away the entire center section and then drilling the four holes. The entire sheet metal process, including time to lay out the part, make cuts, punch holes, bend to the final shape, and weld the corners takes approximately half an hour. A comparable part would require several hours to produce on a milling machine because of the amount of material which must be removed from the center of the part. Before using the equipment, it is crucial to cover some basic safety rules. Always wear safety glasses when operating sheet metal equipment. Always keep your hands and fingers clear of cutting edges and machine clamps. Be careful of sharp edges on sheet metal parts. Assume every edge is razor sharp and always wear gloves to protect your hands when working on any unpowered sheet metal equipment. Never operate a machine with more than one person, as the slightest miscommunication can cause severe bodily injury or severed fingers. If you require assistance, ask a TA for help using the equipment, not another student. Make sure the material being used is flat, not round, and is thinner than 16 gauge. Now that safety has been covered, we can mark our workpiece to denote the various sheet metal operations that will be used in fabrication. To denote a region that will be cut, use a solid line. For holes to be punched or drilled, mark the appropriate location with a cross or a dot. Bends are marked with dashed lines. If there are multiple bends in different directions, mark the flange appropriately, for example, up 30 degrees or down 90 degrees. We begin making our part by using the foot shear to cut the material to its approximate size. Line up the first cut line with the edge of the blade by looking over the top of the cutting blade. Once the workpiece is aligned, gently bring the pedal down by stepping on it. This will clamp the workpiece in place. Once secured, stand on the pedal and stomp with one foot to force the blade to shear the material. Now that the rough shape has been cut out, we need to remove the corners. To do this, we will use the 90 degree corner shear. Line up the corner to be removed with the blade's edges. Hold the workpiece while keeping your fingers clear of the cutting zone and pull the handle down to shear the material. If the corner being cut is not 90 degrees, the hand shear can be used to make the cut. Line the cut marks up with the edge of the blade and pull the handle down to shear the material. It is important to punch out holes before making any bends in the part. Once bends are made, most holes will be unreachable due to geometric constraints. To use the punch, first mark the center of the hole with a center punch. This will help align the hole punch properly. To select the appropriate die, turn the small handle on the right hand side and rotate the turret until the proper punch is lined up. Now return the small handle to its original position and rock the turret to ensure it is locked in place. Now you can locate your workpiece under the die by lining up the center mark with the small cone on the bottom of the die. Pull the large handle down to force the punch through the workpiece and create the hole. With the holes punched and corners removed, we can now bend the sides of the box up. To do this, we will use a sheet metal brake. Align the bend line with the edge of the beam and lower the orange handle down to securely clamp the material. Now, rotate the ball end handle to create the bend. As you make each bend, use your eye or protractor to determine when the bend angle is close to the desired value. When we go to bend the third side, the beam comes in contact with the other two sides, preventing us from bending our workpiece past 45 degrees. In order to properly achieve the desired angle, we will use the finger brake. 
The finger brake operates like the large brake shown previously. However, we now have the ability to adjust the spacing of the dies used for bending. To move the dies, loosen the screw in the center of the die with an Allen wrench, slide it into position, and tighten the screw back down. Once the appropriate spacing is set, align the bend with the dies, secure the workpiece using the clamp, and bend it to the desired angle. Now that our box is complete, we can use the welder to close the seams at the corners to make the part more rigid and better able to support the required loading. This short overview was intended to showcase the sheet metal capabilities that exist in the lab and highlight important safety when using the equipment. If you think sheet metal fabrication might be useful for your project, consult a TA for a more thorough understanding.